Hi, my name is Robert Pearman. I'm a small business server MVP and I'm on the titlerequired.com blog. And in this video, I'm going to talk about VPN client configuration with Windows Server 2012 Essentials. So I'm on my uh, Windows 7 client and I'm going to set up uh, a VPN connection. If you read the, the blog post that this video is linked to, you'll see that we're using SSTP now for VPN connections on Server Essentials. Uh, so that uses HTTPS or port 443 to actually do the tunnel so you don't need to open any additional ports like uh, 1723 as you would have done before to use PPTP. There's nothing special that you need to do in the client configuration as you can see I'm just following the usual Windows 7 uh, VPN wizard put in the address that I want to go to and the oh, put in the right name and then I'll just put in my username and password and you'll see uh, the connection will go by default to SSTP and uh, should connect quite quickly. So now we're connected to the uh, Essentials Network via VPN. We can uh, go ahead and try and access the server via the network. So we're just going to check our IP address information. As when I scroll up, you'll see that my client machine's on 192.168.10. And the VPN connection I've gone into is on 192.168.11. And you can see there the DNS server 11.119, that's the IP address of my essential server. What you will also notice is that there's no connection specific DNS suffix for the uh, PPP connection, and that's going to cause a name resolution issue that we'll see in a second. So we'll just open up uh, a server share. Uh, slash slash tr dash wse is the address of the server. Uh, but as we'll see, this is going to fail and give us an error. So, what we'll do is we'll just uh, do that again and have a look at the details option. And you'll see that it's uh, unable to find the network path. So what we're seeing is uh, an inability to resolve names on the Essentials network, which would usually indicate a problem communicating with DNS, but as we can see the uh, VPN is still connected there. So we can go and use other tools like ping to see if we can communicate with the server, which we can't do by name. Uh, so we can enter NSLOOKUP. So I've just zoomed in on the NSLOOKUP screen for a second to show you that the default server there shows us unknown. That's due to a separate issue with Essentials where the server doesn't have a reverse lookup zone for its IPv4 network. This was raised up as a bug with Microsoft during the MVP uh, private beta, but it was decided that it wasn't a big enough technical issue to get solved. My point, and the reason I raised the bug, was that if you're in a situation where you're trying to trace name resolution problems, the last thing you want to do is open up NS lookup and see unknown against your server name. I think it would be a lot better if you could open up NSLOOKUP and see the correct information for your server, which would at least go some way to proving that name resolution is working, and it would look a little bit more like that. Uh, as I say, Microsoft decided that it wasn't worth uh, the technical effort to get that done, so it stays looking like this. So anyway, moving on, we can try uh, and resolve the server's name, which it can't do. And again, this is just down to the DNS suffix search list that we saw was missing from our uh, PPP connection. So what we'll do now is we'll just go directly to the FQDN of the server, 
that. So we'll put in the full name tr-wat.require.local and we'll see that the server shares come straight up. I'll just do that once more so we get rid of the command prompt in the background. So uh, full server name and uh, the shares come straight up. So what I'll do is I'll just drop a few documents into the company share and uh, we'll see that file transfers are working properly. So it's just some important documents that I've got from a previous blog post I did and uh, so they transfer across because there are any small documents. I'm just going to drop the VPN out now and I'm going to log into the uh, remote web workplace or remote web app as it's called. For those of you who haven't seen it, um, it's very similar if not identical to the uh, remote app from Essentials, SBS Essentials I should say. Just uh, the home screen has a different colour. So we'll just log in quickly and uh, you'll get to see the email gadget that you get if you enable your on-premises exchange server. Just down there in the bottom right. Uh, but we'll click on the company folder and you'll just get to see those uh, documents that I uploaded a minute ago through the VPN connection. So we just load up that uh, company folder. Oh, I'll just click that again. And we just see that those uh, four documents we uploaded through the VPN uh, are accessible through the RWA. And there they are. So uh, just because I'm already logged into the RWA, I'll just quickly show you the uh, email gadget. And if you look closely, uh, when you click over the link for check email you can see that that goes to the remote.spsessentials.co.uk address uh, which uses the uh, application request routing that was mentioned in my blog post on on-premises exchange integration. So it takes a few seconds for uh, OWA to load up uh, but then just tap in our password and uh, we'll be able to log into our mailbox. So again, if you haven't read the uh, blog post I did on on-premises exchange, uh, you should firstly, why haven't you read it? Uh, secondly, you won't be familiar with the concept of application request routing where the essential server can have a single public IP address and the exchange services and the RWA of the essential server can all be accessible uh, via that same one IP. So I didn't have uh, much in that mailbox obviously, it's so brand new. But what we'll do is we'll go back and fix the name resolution issue on the VPN connection. And it's quite simple to do. What we need to do is go into the properties of our VPN connection and look at the IP4 details. So if you're not sure where to find that, uh, if you go to the network icon and the properties of the VPN connection, uh, you want to go to the networking tab and the properties of IPv4, uh, then the advanced and the DNS tab and then what we'll do is we'll just fill in the uh, domain name the internal domain name so title required dot local there in the DNS suffix box and just OK all of that and we'll reconnect our VPN connection just type in the password and then what we'll do is we'll just try and verify some uh, simple connectivity with a ping, oh, name right. and you can see that resolves now. Hey, eagle-eyed amongst you might notice that's resolving to a different IP, uh, but we're pinging the remote, routing and remote access address this time. Uh, but if we look at the IP config details, you'll still see that the essential server is listed on 119 as the DNS server. And you'll also see uh, the connection specific DNS suffix type required.local there. If 
I needed to do anything more to prove this to you. We'll just try and access the server via the short name. And now we can access the shares. So that's all for this video. Hopefully I've explained the issue that you might see with name resolution on an Essentials VPN connection. And uh, if you want to get in touch and talk about anything you've seen in the beta of Essentials, um, contact details there on the screen. Thanks for listening.